I like to have a business where it's zero on expenses and exponential on revenue. This is the first nine days of June. What's my cash flow so far, first nine days of June, right? As long as people keep having sex and keep dying, I got a business, right? 98.3% of our income has been earned by passive income. But if it just took me 10 years to bring in passively a quarter million dollars a year, people kick this number around 63 trillion, 75 trillion. It's a vast, 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 vast amount of money. That's the industry that you're in. I know things. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's crack a lacking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Paula here, hailing to you from, yes, this is Aruba, one big happy island. And um, if you're new to the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel, you gotta know that I have a purpose of this YouTube channel to help you start thinking like a millionaire to help you strategize like a millionaire. So therefore, one day, you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Now, why is that important? Well, I would be doing my part if I didn't share this article with you, which is the article that states the industry most likely to help you become a millionaire. The industry most likely to help you become a millionaire, which is a very, very, very interesting thing because a kid like me with no college degree, with no sales business, financial background can stumble into an industry that is highly most likely to make a millionaire and then become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And many of you may not know, but I am in the life insurance industry. And this article is not based on my opinion, it's based on cold, hard facts. And because I genuinely want to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't share you the reasons why behind these facts. So a few weeks ago, after relocating to Dallas, Texas, I flew back out to Orlando. I did a live workshop with new entrepreneurs in the insurance industry. And I was explaining why, why the financial services and the insurance industry is most likely to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. But before I begin, our next goal for the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is to get to 150,000 subs. Because once we get to 150,000 subs, we are awarding a church charity nonprofit $5,000 from this YouTube channel to that church charity nonprofit because you and I helped cross this channel to over 150,000 subs. So please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to YouTube channel and or share our content so other subscribers potentially may subscribe to our channel too as well. So I don't want to waste any more time. So please, no takers or history makers, bust out your nose because... There's quite a session we got going on here. So check this out, this training session I did live in person. It was a four hour session. I'll give you a quick snippet of it, about a 40 minute section of it. So let's go and check this out. Guys, I've, I've, had, uh, uh, I've, I've had both money problems, okay? I've had money problems when I had no money. I got money problems now when I got money. <laughs> Which would you prefer? Money problems with money. Problems with money, I 100% I, I agree with that. So my, my role for you is not to throw complete everything at you. This is get you off to a faster because the biggest thing I want you to do is have a heightened sense of confidence. Because when you're confident, you can apply. Okay? So once you have the confidence, because I'm going to give you a little bit of skill set, the biggest thing for you now, that if I've done my part and your chairman's counselors have done their part, now it's your part to do what? Your apply is to apply what you've learned. The fastest way to learn something is to immediately have some practical application. Okay? That's why life-changing moments don't happen in a classroom. Life-changing moments are when you're applying what you're learning from the classroom. Okay. So let's talk about the industry right quick. <clears throat> the life insurance industry, okay? It's, people kick this number around 63 trillion, 75 trillion. It's a vast, 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 vast amount of money. What's an easy way to explain $1 trillion? Okay, I'll give, I'll give you an easy one, okay? So, um, Jane? Nala. Nala, Nala. Nala from Lion King. Lion King, right? Okay. <laughs> Nala. Okay. <laughs> so, so, Nala, assuming that the good Lord gave you a million dollars a day to spend, you can't come back with change. A million dollars every day you've got to spend since the day Jesus was born 2021, 22 years ago, okay? You got to spend a million bucks, million bucks, million bucks, million bucks. Till this day, 2021, 2022 years later, how much money have you spent? A million bucks, a 
So you think it's at least a trillion dollars? Because mm -hmm. does anybody do the, know the math? Know that. What, what, what's, what's the math? $1,000 a day, 365 days a, days a year for 2,021 years. <laughs> here's, here's the math. It's $800 billion. You, you, get, you get how vast amount of money that is? Says that the day, says the day biblically speaking, that the, Jesus was born, if you spend a million dollars a day, 356 days a year, for 2,021 years, it would be, be less, less than 810, 800 billion dollars, not even one trillion. Let me give you another uh, example. How much money do you think has ever print, been printed in the history of humankind? I'm, I'm sorry, more specific. How much money do you think has ever been printed in the United States of America? Since 1776. Who said 18 trillion? That's a good, that's a good stab, by the way. 18 trillion dollars. Close. 10 trillion? 10 trillion? Yeah. 11. It's 11 trillion. It's 11 trillion dollars that have been ever created in the history of humankind. With that being said, 6 trillion just got printed in the last 12 months. Wow. <laughs> Thank goodness there are stimulus plans. <laughs> so what does that mean to your dollar? When there's more of it, it's less valuable. valuable, okay? So what's happening now is a fancy word, fancy word called inflation. What's an example of inflation? What's the cost for a gallon of gas out here? It's, high, it's higher now than it was a year ago, right? What about a gallon of milk? Isn't it funny that gas it costs more money than milk? One's food, one's energy, okay? Um, what did Chipotle say a couple, a couple days ago uh, uh, in the news? You hear what happened in Chipotle? They're raising the prices. They're raising the prices. How come? Because they're raising pay. So, oh, slow problem. You want us to pay people 15 bucks a month? No problem. Guess who's going to pay for it? The, cons the consumers. So y'all like uh, your guacamole and chips and uh, your uh, burrito bowls? No problem. You can pay another you know, uh, 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 percentage e uh, extra because they're raising the wages to, to 15 bucks an hour. In addition to that, What's that word? Inflation. So do you think it's cheaper for food to be made or more expensive for food to be made? So those rippling effects will increase the cost of goods and service and in this case, Chipotle. So in other words, the more money you make has to just support the things you need to spend money on. Uh, we're, we're, I was joking around earlier with all the, uh, the different generations. Okay, baby boomers, let me ask you this question. When you're growing up, how much is a gallon of gas? Like 25 cents? 25 cents. Damn! Yeah. Baby boomers were born 1946 to 1964, yeah. right? Yeah. When they were growing up, gallon of gas was? 25. 25, okay. 1964 uh, to I think uh, 1985 uh, is the sexiest generation ever created by human, by God. In the human kind. It's called the gen So if you're born in this generation, you sexy. Okay? Eh, uh, eh, uh, you sexy. Eh, uh, eh, uh, you sexy. <laughs> okay. Now, how much was gas when we were growing up? Yeah. 88, 9, I'm still remembering, yeah, 99 cents. Okay? How many of you were raised in a family where it said, oh my gosh, it's 88 cents, but down the street, it's 84 cents. Yeah. We're going down the street. <laughs> yeah? Okay. And you burn off all the savings, right? We still do it. Okay. <laughs> you still do it. <laughs> 1985 to about 2000, about 2005. Right? Around 2000, 2003. What's it, what's, it, what's it cost for you? Huh? About $2. No. The, uh, how much? So $1.25 to $1.50 yeah. for gas. Okay. What about 2003? So, so this, is, uh, uh, this is millennials. Uh, Judge your next baby boomers. This is Gen Z. You, what's, the gas, what's the gas now? So it's $3. 3 to $4? $3 to $4. So take a look at this. Look at this. Is it trending up or is it trending down? Uh, Last year when gas was like two bucks, like, yeah! Uh, right? Let's go get it. <laughs> so it's trending up or trending down? Up. 
It's trending up. Cost, cost is going up. Okay, better question. Is minimum wage, hourly wage, salaries, are they trending up, stagnant, or going down? Stagnant. stagnant. Mm -hmm. And even if they say, okay, force to 15 bucks an hour in wage, it's going to be two, three, four years from now. So that's why you're in the business, because instead of waiting for government or your employer to give you a raise, guess what you're doing to yourself? I'm giving myself a raise. Can I give you an example? Personal example. Okay, 2015, okay? We came in here, we made $208,000 our first year, okay? 208, okay, 2016, 208 to 646. Not, not, not a bad pay raise? For those of you who have a job, or have had jobs in the past, what was your average yearly pay raise? <laughs> Can you say that without rolling your eyes? <laughs> okay, I love it. Okay, I love it. Okay? So, think about a pay raise from 208 to 646. Pretty good pay raise? Okay, 2016, 2017. 646, we cracked our first seven figures. Three years, two, seven figures. 2018, okay, we plateaued a little bit. 1.1, 10% pay raise. 2019, okay, 2019, 1.4. 2020, last year, 1.8. By the way, is it easier to go from 208 to 646? Then from 1.1 to 1.8, it's it's, guys, this is the pay raise. The, P, the PhD opportunity has paid my wife and I since we've been here in 2015. We're going on our sixth year now. It's paid us a little over $6 million since we've been here. Six million bucks. So my opportunity is? It's your opportunity. The, di the difference between me and you right now is what? Time and effort. Don't let my shit intimidate you. Okay? I am nobody special. I'm nobody that, that says, oh, you were destined to be a millionaire. Guys, I got the Marine Corps. They're like, hey, we want to be a cop? Sure. <laughs> Wait, what do, what do you pay me? 90000 What? You can pay me 90000 a year to be a cop? Southern California, right? But where? Oh, LAPD. Okay. <laughs> but where? Oh, South Central LA. No, 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 no. 90000 a year? No, okay. No. Let me ask you a question. I saw that movie, Boys in the Hood. Okay? 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 Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, it said, inspired by true events. Right? I saw that movie. I, saw, I was talking to the beat cops, because a lot of these uh, cops were reservists in the Marines. Right? And they come down to our unit, train over the, uh, once a week, and I say, hey, what's it really like, though? Okay? How often do you have to withdraw your weapon to protect your life each day? Ah, it's only like three, four times a day. <laughs> Really? That's it? No problem? Three or four times a day to protect your life? I got out of the military to be there for my kids. Now I won't put myself in the same perspective? Nah, it's okay. I'm not going to be a cop. By, by the way, is it, is it easy to be a cop today? No. <laughs> you cannot have a bad day. You know, uh, in, what's that? No, you said that for six years you're paid over $6 million, right? When they win the company. Since you're with the company over mm -hmm. six years. Yeah. So I quickly calculate what you earn per year <laughs> in your first company. To earn that, you'd have to work 24 years. I'm like, Isn't that something? Wow. Okay, by the way, check this out. Let's, but let's, let's do the math in this industry that you're a part of. Yeah. What is the average? What is the average? Per, you guys got this? Yes. Okay. What is it? So Google this. Wow. By the way, fast start school. When you're racing a board, it's always up down. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know why? Because it's side to side, guess what happens? <laughs> Stop looking at my butt. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> <I'm so wrong. laughs> just, just jokes, right? Just jokes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody go. Somebody Google this. Average median household income 2020. Mm. <laughs> With attitude from that corner. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Is that by this area or your hometown? 
Uh, average median air, average United States median income. I'm talking about Tennessee, Orlando, uh, LA, New York. Average median household income in the United States of America. 2019 is fine. 2019 gives it in the ballpark. Average median household income? Okay. What, what, what about what, coast to coast, right? Hey Siri. Average household income 2020. 55? It's more like it. Okay. I found this on the web for average household income 2020. Okay. Uh, uh, Census Bureau. Okay. Census.gov. Pretty decent resource. <laughs> Government re resource, right? Average household income in America. Okay. Okay. So me median household income was. Okay, so in 2019, it increased 6.8 percent from the 2018. So median income of, so 60, so 64,000 in 2018, 19, 68,000. So husband and wife. Okay, that's what household income is. You probably saw individual income. So household income means husband and wife, or whoever's in. It could be five people in house, a Latino neighborhood, right? Five people in house. Okay. <laughs> Census check. Okay. <laughs> So, so 68,000, 68,073. Well, let's add this up real quick. I'm curious. I might, I might be off. So somebody add, do, so 208 plus 646 plus 1 mil plus 1.1 plus 1.4, 1.8. I'm not even counting 2021. So Nala, can you tell everybody, this is, my, this is the first nine days of June. What's my cash flow so far, first nine days of June? $53,075. First nine days of June is $53,000 income. Wow. Like, is this fair? Bro, military paycheck, military paycheck. I was getting paid $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. And I'm making 53000 in the first nine days of June? Wow. Without having to put my life on the line? Okay, so, so add all this up? 6.1, 6.1, okay, five. Okay, so let's do the math here. The average household income is 68,703. Do the formula. So s divide that into 6154 <laughs> lifetime earnings. So in other words, what I'm trying to find out is if I'm making the if I just settle for my job, if you just leave out of fast start school and you quit the business and you just settle for your job, <laughs> how long will it take you to make 6.1 million dollars, which is based on the fact that you're coming up with, which is that how many years? 89 years. 89 years. So if I just kind of like settle out and, ah, don't come to the office, ah, I'll do it next month, I'll do it next month, next month turns into next quarter, next quarter turns into next year, next year turns into next decade. Listen, I started this business when I was 24, 25 years old. I'll tell you this, I blink, I'm 47 today. Okay? Kids, boom, boom, boom. All these things happen. I remember when I was 24 years old and somebody told me they were 28 years old, I said, bad, old guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're 20, 22, somebody says they're 28, you're almost pushing 30. <laughs> right? Right? So do you want to spend the next six years? By the way, let's say you're half right. Matt, I do half of what you do. And it's 3.05 3 million. <laughs> It, what's, what's, what's half of that? 44? 44.5? It'll, it'll still take you 44 years to make $3 million. So the best years of your life, what do you want doing? 44 years to make $68,000 a year? Or challenge yourself over the next five years, maybe even 10 years at most. Hey, let me find out this pocket of time, this window of time, what I'm made of. But man, it's not guaranteed. I know. By the way, neither is this. Essential, non-essential, remember that? Right. How about pay raise, is that, is that guaranteed? But who do you want to trust more? Do you want to trust in the man, the boss, the, the system giving you a pay raise, or do you trust yourself for your pay raise? Who would you rather trust? So that's what we're fast our school and coming to the office and learning this business is getting you to do.
to trust more of you. To, to shed yourself of your old habits and incorporate, shed yourself of the broken ease habits and incorporate some of the rich and ease habits. The million ease. Right? Rich and ease with your bread spilled with million ease, right? Oh, oh. But I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. This is, I can tell how she thinks. If, I, if I'm going to invest 44 years or 89 years, do I do it for somebody else or do it for myself? Think about this stuff, guys. Let, let's, say, let's say you don't want to be a multi, multi, multi million. You don't want to be, you don't want to be a, somebody that has $100 million. So what? I mean, are you okay in the next 10 years to make three million bucks? I say, babe, listen, you know, we, we, we have, it, take, it took us three years to make three, to make a, listen, make a, 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 a real, real life example. It took me 10 years to build a business that no matter what I do, I still make $250,000 a year. Forget the million dollar stuff. But if it just took me 10 years to bring in passively a quarter million dollars a year, think about this right now. On your notes, write down your age. Don't show it to anybody. <laughs> okay? Add 10 to that number. <laughs> How, right, keep it to yourself. How old are you now? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but this, this business is very simple, very predictable. I'll, I'll tell you how simple and predictable it is. Here. Give me your, give me your notes real quick. This is, this is very simple and predictable. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask somebody here to pick a number between 1 and 10. This is so simple. Okay. Hold it there. Okay, I need a volunteer. Pick a number. One man. Army. Pick a number between one and ten, keep it to yourself. Do it again. Pick a number between one and ten, keep it to yourself. Got it? Okay. Um, add three to that number. Damn, hold this army guy can add. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Maybe I need to ask Air Force. You good? <laughs> they know math. Okay. Number between one and ten, add, add three to it. Okay, add two to it. Got it? Okay, you got that number now? Subtract that number by the number you originally started with. Got it? What number did I write down that he has? Read, read it out loud. Five. Five, you got five, don't you? Wow. I know things. <laughs> <laughs> so th this, is, this is, with this business guaranteed, it's systematic, predictable. But you just got to follow the math. You got to follow the system. Okay, let me get back to the industry. <laughs> okay, here we go. 63 children out of the industry. N number of licensed agents in our industry, approximately 350,000 licensed agents. Licensed life insurance agents. How many people, how many people in uh, America? 330 million. How, interesting how to serve that market. But of the 330 million, how many, actually, uh, how many of them actually need our products? All, all, all of them. Yeah. All the way from the babies, all the way to the senior citizens, all, assuming that they are insurable. Okay, let me give you context, some context. Real estate agents, there's 1.5 million real estate agents out there. Anybody know anybody in real estate? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everybody in the mom is in real estate, okay? Yeah. You gotta think I, uh, IG. HGTV, they, they are a great recruiting tool for real estate, okay? Everybody thinks they're a, a flipper? Everybody thinks they're a realtor? Oh, you know, I can do this in 30 minutes. Okay? 1.5 million realtors. How many homes for sale in the inventory? One million homes. So in other words, there are more real estate agents than there are current Homes for sale. What does this mean? Certain real estate agents aren't going to eat in this year. Correct, supply and demand. Check this out. Look at this number 10. I was sharing you this morning. Out of 10 people, how many of them need to buy a home right now? One, one out of 10. Two maybe, one's qualified. Out of 10, out of 10 people, how many, how many need insurance, save for their retirement, save for the kids' college? 
And here's the coolest part, real estate agent. Okay, this is a million dollar home. I really like this home, but can you sell it to me for 500,000? No. <laughs> right? Oh, I really love this life insurance, but it can only afford 50 bucks a month. Great, can we walk it down to 750, 500,000 and walk you back up to the million dollars in coverage? Let's, let's lock in your $500,000. So in other words, your scale, okay? You can scale your price to your client. So assuming that you've got credibility and trust. Credibility plus trust. Now, I'm, I'm gonna ask this to the newbies, not the veterans. What do you think is more important, credibility or trust? trust. Really? Credibility. Why, why? Credibility. Let, me ask, let me ask, how about this word, likability? What do you think is more important, likability or trust? Likeability. Why? If I don't like you, why should I trust you? Right. <laughs> you, ever, you, ever, uh, you ever talk to somebody in the insurance industry? Well, yo, I know about life insurance. I have a CLU. I have a CHFC. I'm a certified financial planner. And I'm more smart than you. That's why people are going to do business with me. Mm -hmm. Right? Shut up, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> right? You ever, you ever about to think about that? Yeah. So, so many guys in the insurance industry say, hey, I got a CLU after my last name. But what does CLU stand for? Life, uh, there you go. Chartered Life Underwriter. Uh, you took a specialized course in understanding life insurance. Hey, I'm a CHFC. What is that? Staff. Chartered Financial Consultant. I'm a CFP. What is that? Staff. Certified Staff. Financial Staff. Planner. I'm so glad you're getting exposed to this. I'm so glad you also are proving to me that the world doesn't understand shit about financial services. <laughs> That's why America needs you, man. You know why? The rest of the industry, check this out, the rest of the industry has shifted away from the underserved, overlooked, multicultural middle class. You guys go to Bank of America and say, hey, I want to talk to a financial advisor. Talk to a financial advisor. You know what they're going to say? Great. Talk to our Merrill Lynch guys. Do you have $250,000? Oh, no, you don't. Okay. Talk to our online website called Merrill Edge. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, you don't deserve a conversation with a financial advisor. By the way, the financial advisor, why do they call them financial advisors to begin with? Because they're not really advising that much. They're just basically telling you which mutual fund to buy. Yeah. By the way, financial advice is such a bad word. Because mm -hmm. even to me, I don't take financial advice just from anybody. Head, note, 101. You are an insurance agent. agent. You are not a financial advisor. Zero. And even if you were to be considered a financial advisor, you need a Series 6 license, a Series 7 license, a Series 65 license. And in other words, you can't even use anything on social media because everything you do on social media is considered marketing advertising. It's got to be approved through compliance. So we're not on that side of the business. Okay, back to the industry, though. You are in a 63, 65, 75 trillion dollar market. This is insurance. Okay. And the reason why likability is so important because likability allows people to then trust you. Okay, your relatability, credibility, and then they'll be able to uh, trust you. Okay. So when, when I'm looking at this, even if I was a realtor, when do I make money? Only when I? Sell. You know why people love real estate investing? Not real estate selling? Why do people like real estate investing? Because it provides what? What type of income? Three types, three types of income to make it in America. Earn it. You earn it passively. Or you earn it through your portfolio. This is rich people language. I probably spelled portfolio wrong and put another dot in it and I shouldn't be. Okay. All right. Earn it, passive portfolio. What the hell are you talking about, man? Rich and ease. Broken knees. <laughs> Rich and ease. Broken knees. Rich and ease, broken knees. Broken knees is we have to earn it by punching a clock, punching out. I have to earn it by selling something, selling a life insurance, selling real estate. Long term, long term, what do you want to do? See that, by the way, see this income that uh, uh, we've added up here? 6.15 million. Let me add another number 1.7%. 
I mean, sounds like a radio station. What does that mean? 1.7% of our 6.15 million has been earned by active earned personal production. 98.3% of our income has been earned by passive income. And just recently, we're starting to add now because of dividends of the company, portfolio. You guys, you guys heard the news, right? What, did, what, did our, what, did, what was our dividend check last month? $123,000 check. We got $123,000 check for, through ownership of PHP. Who wants to be an owner? <laughs> I like that check because you have to sell something. Yeah, you just invested in something. How many of you guys have heard of uh, Uncle, Uncle Nearest Whiskey? Okay. How many of you guys have heard? Okay, better question. Have you heard of Jack Daniels? Yes. Okay. So, so uh, uh, Jack Daniels' mentor was uh, a guy by the name of Nearest Green. The story's blown up about five years ago. A friend of ours, name was Fawn. She went down there because she found out that Uncle Nearest Green was the emancipated slave who mentored Jack Daniels to create Jack Daniels whiskey. But this is 1868. Optics of it were bad. The Civil War just ended. And they say, you know, we're giving credit to an emancipated slave for creating a liquor company. I'm not going to buy this liquor. You know, you know it's, it's what I'm saying? But fast forward to 2015. Hey, how come you haven't given credit yet to Uncle Nearest Green? So guess what Jack Daniels said? Fine. You got it. They gave honor and credit. The person actually mentored Jack Daniels, this emancipated slave named Uncle Nearest Green. So fun, we were done. She go back to the distillery in, in um, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Who did she still find working at Jack Daniels Distillery? Descendants of Uncle Nearest Green still working there. She gets them together. Boom, boom, boom. What do you guys want to do? They've admitted to it. They want to know. You want lost? My husband's alert, right? He's a lawyer. What do you want to do? No, no, no. They're taking good care of us. However, Uncle Nearest Green has handed down recipes from his African um, uh, uh, roots of making whiskey. And we want to create a new whiskey brand, uh, but we don't know how to do it. So guess what Fawn does? Ring, 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 calls up. Hey, Matt, Sheena, would you like to invest in this company called Uncle Nearest Whiskey? Really? Oh, interesting. Sure. What's the story? Wow. Of course. No problem. You have no problems being Christian and investing in a liquor company. Hey, Jesus' first miracle. <laughs> Right? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> okay? Those are just, that's it. Simple justification. Okay? <laughs> and today, guess what happens to Uncle Nearest? It's the fastest growing whiskey company in the history of America. It's in 31 different countries. You can find it at Target. Uh, what do you call this? Pubics? <laughs> Pub Publix. 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 You can find it at all the liquor stores. It's the only board in America of a whiskey company that's multicultural. It's the only CEO of a whiskey company in America that's run by a black woman. Mm. Awesome. Because we decided to invest some of that into a portfolio. portfolio. So in addition to getting other dividend checks with PHP, we're getting other money just being thrown our way because she's doing a great job operating Uncle Nearest Green. Okay? That's, that's what you're doing to invest back into your communities. That's what you, and she's creating jobs. Okay? That's what happens when you have money that you earn passive in portfolio when you scale your income. If you've never had an opportunity to do that, think about this real quick. You're, you're a real estate investor. What's the only way for you to scale your real estate investment portfolio? Let's say, let's say you have an apartment building, okay? What do, you have to, what do you have to do to obtain this apartment building? You have 20 units. What do you need? To, 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 acquire this, to acquire this building, you need money. Okay, so you need to probably, if you don't have 10 million bucks, where do you get 10 million bucks? The From the bank, right? Okay, so bank, loan, okay. So the bank says, okay, we'll allow you to buy this property only if you what? Put a down payment. What's a down payment on commercial property? At least 20, 25%, 30%, right? So using $10 million as a, as a, as a number, how much money do you have to put down to get this $10 million building? Two to three mil. Well, according to her calculations, <laughs> it'll take you 44 years to save $3 million. <laughs> Making $68,000 a year. And by then, you're out of reach out of this property. So in other words, wealth will escape you if you do nothing with your current, current opportunity today. You guys get it? Wealth is going to slip right through your hands you, you, you had the opportunity to, to grasp it. So you need 2 to $3 million. And the, the, the bank, for example, Patrick just bought the house. 
Paige, you bought the house, right? It was a $20.4 million house. <laughs> okay, 20.4 20, 20 million dollars. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how much how much down payment you think Patrick had to put down on a house? In, in the article, it actually shows you. He got it financed 13.3 3 million dollars through a company called Goldman. Yes. Ooh, is Goldman a, a, a mortgage company? <laughs> no. no. What are they? Well, the wealth management company. Okay, give you some context. Remember talking about Bank of America? Merrill Lynch guys? How many Merrill Lynch financial advisors do you think are out there in the marketplace? Okay, by the way, Merrill, they do, in, uh, uh, they do investments. Okay, in this industry, check this out. In this industry, you have guys that do insurance first and then investments second. Or you guys got to do investments first and insurance second. Okay, what are you? Insurance. Any investments? No. no, we are only doing what? Insurance only. So if somebody asks you, do you guys do investments? You answer what? No. We simply do? Insurance. Yes. So what the heck is Patrick's 13.3 million from Goldman Sachs come from? It's called a line of credit. How do you get a line of credit from a wealth management company? <laughs> what securitizes a line of credit from a wealth management company? Because you have what? Well, money deposited there. <laughs> so they're willing to give you 13.3 million dollars. How much money do you think Patrick really has at Goldman Sachs? Okay, speaking of Goldman Sachs, how many advisors at Merrill Lynch across the country? Banks of America, wealth, uh, wealth uh, financial advisors. I'll give you the numbers, 15,000. Series seven, financial advisors work at Merrill Lynch. How many Goldman Sachs advisors do you think there are? Who, 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 do, they, who do they serve? 500. 500 wealth advisors at Goldman Sachs. Why? Because you want to talk to the top 1%. So there's a certain level. So if I'm at Merrill Lynch, Charles Schwab, I need 250. And based on some of you guys' uh, upbringing, where you came from, chances are you get 250, have somebody finally talk to you, when is that going to happen? Probably never. Okay, what about this? When are we gonna, how, how much money do you need to have at Goldman Sachs for you to have a Goldman Sachs advisor? <laughs> Here's the number, it's 10 mil, at least 10 mil, okay? So what happens is, depending on your deposits, Goldman Sachs says, hey, I, hear, I see that you got 10 mil, 20 mil, 50 mil here at Goldman Sachs. Why don't you go out there and uh, invest in businesses and property and we'll extend you a line of? <laughs> so they get Patrick a checkbook based on his deposits. Wouldn't you like to have a checkbook based on your deposits at the bank? That's the conversation we're talking about. Okay. So here, back to, the, back to the example here. I need a two to three million dollar down payment to buy this 20 unit apartment building. Yes? Yes. yes. In order to get what? Rent. And hopefully the rent is above and beyond what you owe on a two million dollar mortgage. Okay? So for example, on a $2 million mortgage, your mortgage is approximately $14,000 a month, okay? Hopefully you collect more than $14,000. Let's say you collect $20,000. $20,000 here, you pocket $6,000, that's your profit. Okay, but what do you need first? You need two to $3 million of down payment. And then your expenses, you can write off your $6,000. And then you need employees. By the way, in a 20 unit apartment building, you think uh, toilets get, get uh, backed up? No. <laughs> Who's doing it? You? <laughs> Damn, what a shitty job. <laughs> okay, um, let me ask you this question. Uh, uh, who, who, get, who gets any psychologist? Anybody here with a psychology degree? Psychiatrist? Okay. Woo! Psychiatrist, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is there a psychiatrist? Psychologist? Awesome, okay. Let me ask you guys a question. God bless you, by the way. Who gets paid more money, plumbers or psychologists? Plumbers. Plumbers. Ain't, ain't, ain't that a sad answer? Okay, so in other words, people are willing to pay you to take shit out of their toilets versus get the shit out of their brains. And what makes you more money? <laughs> the shit out of a brain. But people want to pay a plumber more versus speaking to smart people. Like what's your name? Don, Donna? Donna? 
Speaking of Doug, by the way, just the pleasant way she just said her voice, I'd love to have a conversation with her. She was having a conversation with her, oh, here's my problems. <laughs> Yes, his question. I was asking the office this morning, just a quick refresher. I have offices all over the country. Do I override this Orlando office? Yes. yes. Do I override, um, uh, do I override uh, Jacksonville? Yes. Do I override uh, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina? Yes. Do I override Annapolis, Maryland? Yes. Do I override Memphis, Tennessee? Yes. Nashville, Tennessee? Yes. Where else? Do I override Atlanta, Georgia? Do I override um, uh, 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 Columbus and Cincinnati, Ohio? Yes. It's 10 offices. Do I override Salt Lake City, Utah? Yes. Do I override uh, um, New Orleans? Yes. <laughs> Do I override Las Vegas? Yes. Do I override San Diego? Yes. Do I override Hayward, California? Yes. I, I, can I keep going on and on and on? Yes. Okay, <laughs> better question. What are my expenses here in Orlando? Zero. What are my expenses in Jacksonville? My expenses in Charlotte, North Carolina. Zero. On and on and on. And That's a whole lot of zeros. That's a good ride. I like to have a business where it's zero on expenses and exponential on revenue. Zero is well, That's the industry that you're in. So think about this. What would I have to do to make 98.3% passive income at $6.15 million buying real estate? Okay, if, if, I, if I want to make more revenue, what do I have to put down more of? More money. So if I want to buy another 20 unit, what do I have to put down? More, money. more down payment. So I have to be out first before I collect first. Right. Guys get it? Yeah. If I want to buy another two, 20 unit, guess what I could put? More money. more money before I start collecting. This is you. Okay, this is you. Running an insurance agency. Running an insurance business. Uh, you guys already realize you can be anywhere just as long as you have access to Zoom. Of course, office culture is very important to translate um, training because certain things you just can't see over Zoom. Like, how many guys already feel the benefit of being together? Ooh. Right? Yeah. Huge? Yeah. I mean, do you experience this via Zoom? No. no. Exactly. It's not, even, it's not even close. So the benefit of being here, you get to expand your offices. Give me some cities and states that some of your teammate, teammates are in. Annapolis. Annapolis. Huh? Charlotte. Kentucky. Kentucky. Huh? Allentown. Allentown. PA. Can imagine having all these four different locations. You override them, but your expenses are zero. That's the industry that you got involved in. Um, have you heard of life insurance? <laughs> right? As long as people keep having sex and keep dying, I got a business. Right? I, I'm even more profitable in taxes, <laughs> right? So insurance has been around for 2,000, 3,000 years. First evidence of that was during the Roman Empire, and they had something called annuitatum, which today is called annuity, right? Which is known as a pension. So the Roman soldiers retired from the army. The Roman army gave them a annuitatum for the rest of their lives, okay? So uh, the Lloyds of London, when they shipped boats, uh, coming from uh, uh, Europe to uh, America, they ensured that if uh, they put their cargo split on two different ships, if one of the ships didn't arrive because it crashed at sea, lost at sea, the, the, the uh, um, um, claim would be paid to reimburse the other part of the uh, uh, shipping that wasn't received from the Lloyds of London. Okay? The first life insurance company in the history of America was called Fes First Presbyterian Life Insurance Company, created by the Presbyterian church because they want to bring over Presbyterian pastors from Europe to come over here and the pastors didn't come by they insured them which today is called Prudential okay so all these different insurance companies have been around forever um, uh, I'm just curious I, I don't know Orlando very much what's the biggest buildings in downtown Orlando yeah financial service companies Isn't it interesting that the big banks own some of the biggest bank build, uh, buildings in downtown, downtown Orlando? By the way, this thing called FDIC is very prominent at the bank, called FDIC. So in other words, if people uh, have their accounts there and that bank defaults, this company takes in and makes sure it reimburses people what they deposit. What does that stand for? Federal Depository Insurance 
corporation. So even the banks love insurance. Let me give you some more evidence. Before I close on property, real estate investments, purchase my own house. Before I qualify for a new car loan and drive the new car off the lot, they don't want to give me my keys to my car or my house until I have proof of insurance. You know what the sad part is? How many people got kids? Okay, before you leave the hospital with your newborn baby, they need proof of what? Nope, car seat. Car seat. <laughs> Ain't this some shit? <laughs> so the banks require you to cover their assets when it comes to homes and cars. But people have no, no care about your own kids. So who should care about your kids? You. But we've just been programmed wrong. Think about how important insurance is. Last time I bought a cell phone, an iPhone, they asked me if I wanted to add $9.99 a month for? Yeah, Apple Care. Yeah. Tell them go to uh, hey, this is a great DVD you're buying. <laughs> you know what I tell them? You want insurance? No, I'll probably break it before you have to get insurance. <laughs> you know? So it's it's a uh, insurance is a a, a a very solid product because worst case scenario happens, sadly something happens to our clients. Guess what they receive in return? They receive a death benefit and or a living benefit. <laughs> Woo! Now that is a lot of information, but really it's that simple. The life insurance industry is an industry most likely to help you become a millionaire. Now, if you want to do more digging in, please check out this video here, which is the movement that is disrupting a $63 trillion market. And again, this video right here, why this trillion dollar industry made me and many of my colleagues and friends and business partners millions of dollars per year. So please share with me your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. I don't expect you to take my word for it. Do some research for yourself. Drop in the comment section below what your thoughts are. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, on a trip here to Aruba, I'll be Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.